Welcome to Resilient Love Podcast. Join hosts Quentin and Brianna as they discuss tips on love, life, and business. Let's get into this next episode. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. We're back. Yes, we took a a little break, you know, a little summer break, but we're coming back now with some great, great conversation for you. Uh, For those of you who are just now joining us, I am Brianna. And I'm Quentin. And so this is Resilient Love. And we have a great episode for you today. We're going to be talking about getting back to um setting that biblical vision for your business for your life and also being able to go forward with that discovery call that allows you to get the clientele you so desire for your business and we have a great special guest with us miss leah mason virgin who empowers women to achieve the miracles they are asking god for by connecting them to his word insights kingdom principles strategies and an empowered faith-filled mindset so i'm not going to take up any more time let's have miss leah join us Hi. Hi. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for having me today. I am just so honored and privileged to be here and and share space and time with you guys. So thank you. Yes. Thank Thank you. you. So welcome to the podcast. Share a bit more about yourself. All right. So, um, I'm Leah Mason Virgin. I am a Christian success coach. I work with um, Christian women entrepreneurs, um, career women, a- any woman who's looking to empower their mindset. Um, I have been married for over 20 years. I have three beautiful children, and I have quite quite the journey to get to this place. I never really... Um, I never imagined this place. I'm going to tell you guys, it was oh. not, it was not something um, that I ever thought I would do it would be to build my own business, to be an entrepreneur it was nothing. It was not something I grew up with. It was not, I had told God no, since the time I was 18, um, when I was 18, God uh, put on my heart. He kept saying, you know, write about me, talk about me. And I said, no. I said, I'm not good enough. I said, I'm not a good enough writer. I'm not a good enough. I I said, I'm not a good enough everything from, from childhood on, because that was the message that I received um, in my childhood. It was a very broken and a chaotic time. Um, But thankfully um, I came to literally my breaking point, uh, being on a hardwood floor, crying my eyes out after the flood of my basement um, three and a half years ago. And at that point, I had already started plugging into the Word of God, and I had already started just literally writing out prayers. Um, About seven and a half, eight years ago, now I I came back from, um, you know, a women's weekend away. And I just was really embarrassed by my behavior. I was really embarrassed and broken. And I was just like, God, something's got to change. Like, I don't know how to, I don't know how to be and heal. You keep saying that the, that there's an abundant life. You keep saying that there's healing, but I don't know how to get that. And interestingly enough, um, I was at that time, I was a registered nurse. I actually have two degrees. That's I've had a journey, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Let me just tell you. Oh, wow. um, yeah. And, um, you know, but I knew counseling. I tried counseling. I tried all these different things. And I'm not, and I'm definitely one that is all about we can, we can have Jesus. We can have counseling. We can have Western medicine. We can have natural paths, all the things. I'm all about it. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was seeking for myself. I was seeking my healing journey. I was starting my healing journey over eight years ago. And so I actually went into somebody else's life coaching um, program for moms after, you know, after the flood, I'm laying on the floor, like screaming and crying, letting even 
people who are outside of my immediate family see me at a very broken place, at a very, very broken place. Mm-hmm. And I had dealt with anxiety and depression for so many decades. And I was just like, there's got to be a way to thrive through the heart. Yes. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know how to do that. Like I was begging God for all these miracles, begging God for deliverance, begging God and enough And in my opinion, at the time, nothing was happening, but God has a plan and a way when we choose to keep seeking, right? And Mm -hmm. I was, I was still seeking. I was plugging into the word of God every day. I was reading it and I was writing it out, um, you know, from that broken place. And I was making these little changes in my daily habits that once I got to that really broken place, And I had a coach come in, all those things started to rapidly come together. Mm, mm -hmm. And so I came out of the other side of that and I was like, I refuse to live by fear anymore. I'm going to walk by faith. You tell me what you want me to do, Jesus, and I'm going to do it. That's right. (laughs) (laughs) And Jesus was like, finally. Right. Finally, what's wrong with you? <laughs> I was like, I know. I've been telling you no. He's like, so you're going to write about me or what? And I was like, <sighs> I'm only going to Moses once. And I said, <laughs> Jesus, you shouldn't pick me. I said, I am undeserving of you picking me. And he said, I picked you. I called you. I'm going to qualify you. Are you mm-hmm. going to obey? And I said, yes, I am going to obey. And that was three and a half years ago. Um, It was um, Memorial Weekends of the Flood in our home in 2018. Mm -hmm. And I started bursting with blessings. It was a blog. That was how I started. I actually thought I was going to be a Christian fiction writer. (laughs) Uh uh I was like, yeah, no, no, no. And I will never forget the first time he told me to write a Bible study. And I was like, can I Moses once? Just (laughs) he knows that I'm going to Moses him one time. Like, I mean, Moses, Kahanas Gondas, man. I mean, because like really three times in a burning bush. Come on, come on. <laughs> but, you know, I did spend two decades telling God no. So, you know, there's that. Well, so, yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, so there's that. There is that. Okay, Moses, you're right. You're right. So that's ki- that was the beginning of how I got to the point where I realized, like, uh, you know, I'm going to say yes and, and, and started to cultivate um, with God how I serve now and how I help women to become the miracles that they keep begging God for, because everybody wants an easy button. Right. Come on, Staples. Right. (laughs) Clients. Yes. (laughs) Uh, Weight loss. Yes. Financial gain. Yes. Like, I mean, that's like, like, is all what we want. Right. I mean, Jesus knows every now and again, I'll be like, so how's a lotto ticket looking for like today? Would that be all right? He's always like, yeah, no. <laughs> right. Okay, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that was kind of the beginning of it. And so, yeah. <laughs> wow. That was good. Like I, I was, we were just sitting here just captivated by the story because like just you purely saying, I, I was like, I'm going to head out, God. You know, I know you said come, but I'm going to have to hit you with a Peter. Say it one more time before I get out the boat. (laughs) But I appreciate that that moment of just you sharing how you were at a low place. And that low place was where God brought you out and gave you that awareness and awakening to, like, just come forth. So I just, I really like that. Um. Um. I just say that it was a purpose in it all. He already knew he had to bring you low for you yeah. to come by. So, yeah. Ooh. And that's what I try to encourage women. I'm like, you know, we never talk about, you know, prepare for the hard, right? We never mm-hmm. talk about, you know, that if, if we don't choose God daily, 
and listen to him daily and obediently follow, where do you think you're going to be? Right. Yeah. And I will tell you, God's <laughs> going to be like, A, he's either going to give your blessings away to somebody else. Mm -hmm. He's mm -hmm. going to find somebody who's obedient. That's right. Mm hmm. Or he's going to bring you to the foot of the cross, whether that looks like a hardwood floor and allowing the flood of my home and me to go from getting out of several tens of thousands of dollars of debt to go right back in to several tens of thousands of dollars of debt. And that's mm -hmm. what happened because I had said no to him. And I'm not saying that God is like, you know, he allows he allows things. That's right. And I'll, I, you know, I give the real and raw. I tell my community, hashtag real and raw. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to pretend. There, you know, God will allow things. He allows the brokenness of this world to come in to make his kingdom agenda. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Had I been obedient over two decades ago, I don't know where I would be. But I pretty much guarantee I wouldn't have been in this house. And I wouldn't. Yeah. I, because I up and moved our family. I up and did a lot of things that impacted our children in negative ways, impacted our finances in negative ways because I was so broken, because I, you know, was so anxious and depressed that I used money as a way to fill some of the hurt and the void that I didn't use the word of God to fill and to heal, mm -hmm. right? That's right. And so I want people to realize like, you know, it's not like I'm saying, you know, God's like, you know, like gonna do something mean. No, he's just gonna allow the consequences of what we do. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Right, mm -hmm. you know, but and he also set me up to then thrive and prosper after the fact because I came into alignment with him. And I was already on that journey. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we could sustain having that flood bring us back into debt was because we had chose Dave Ramsey right before. So we did Dave Ramsey. We started tithing appropriately. We started doing sowing seeds. We started doing all these things so that when, you know, but I was still saying no. And he was calling me to a blog. He had been that whole time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was ignoring it. And I was like, nah, I'm not a good enough writer. It was just that still small voice that I was like, shoo. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. You know? And so he's like, you're sort of in alignment with me, but you're not fully. Right. So I'm going to bring you fully in because you, you, get you out have a greater time. purpose. Yeah. yeah. And he's, he wants me, he wants me to, you know, be able to serve women where they are in their heart and in their broken and in their places of, disobedience and un and not understanding how to apply the word of God to their lives because our uh, Christian American church, you know, whoever's listening, I can only talk from American culture because that's where I am. I'm mm -hmm. in Maryland. Um, but the majority of churches, they don't teach how to take and apply the word of God and stand on it and speak it and pray it and believe it and be it. Mm -hmm. That's true. Right. And the so pandemic when, really challenged us in our faith. The pandemic challenged that oh doctrine in which you were taught. And if you, as you mentioned, were not taught the proper doctrine, you've actually fell by the wayside in the sense of being conformed by the word, word world and not being transformed by the renewing of your mind. So, yeah. That's good. I, I'm, this is a powerful conversation already. We haven't even gotten to the meat of it. <laughs> I appreciate you. That's good. Um. So, so yeah, let's get into the meat. Like, as you mentioned, you are a Christian counselor slash coach and you empower women with strategies. So can you take us down that walk when you first initiated that call and how you began to get the clients and go forward in that business. Yeah. Um, 
So I'm a faith community nurse. So not not counselor. Just want to oh, okay. clarify because I don't want anybody to be like, "Hey, it's time for a counseling session." I'm a. Oh, dancer. okay. No. Make it make it clear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. You know, but um. So interestingly enough, you know, I know that a lot of people like the pandemic really impacted a lot of women to wake up and to see that there are other possibilities, especially in the online space, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that was one of the things that, that God really brought home to me last year was, you know, he said to me, um, I want you to teach the women to become a mighty army for the Lord. And that's from Psalm 68, verse 13, complete Jewish Bible version says, the women are a mighty army for Adonai, for the Lord. Mm -hmm. right? But our church doesn't teach that, at least the churches that I've been um, exposed to in our culture. You know, we have, um, you know, had a lot of, of, uh, women marginalized in the churches that I have been exposed to and the women that I work with have been exposed to. And that's not what God has ever wanted, right? You know, mm -hmm. Judge Deborah, so many amazing women, Shira who made two cities, and this is just the Old Testament, right? right. You know, God wants us empowering ourselves with the word of God and then sharing the good news, right? And so, you know, when I started to, um, you know, build my business and realize like God's calling me to be a coach, to help women to unpack the past in a biblical way, to start standing on the word of God, start speaking the word of God, start praying the word of God um, out loud in a powerful way, um, you know, I didn't know how to do that. Mm -hmm. I had no clue. I was just like, oh, okay. Like, okay, I'll make a community group and I'll just go live. And I, you know, I'm like strong arming, like friends come into my community <laughs> group. And I'd open the word of God and I'd be like, this verse looks great. Let's talk about that. You know, right. uh, <laughs> because I had already started you know, my journey of, of more than eight years of writing the word of God out, putting it all over my, my bathroom walls. I don't have an HGTV bathroom, ladies and gentlemen, just so you know, no, <laughs> it it's like, it's covered in the word of God, you yeah. know? And, and I was praying the word of God. I was rebuking the fear and the anxiety. And I was, you know, and I wanted to share that. I wanted to help other women, but I was like, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was like, how do I get clients? How do I tell people what I do? Like, I was clueless. Thankfully, um, after, you know, going through one boo-boo-headed um, business coach, which really she wasn't, but okay. I know a lot of people have been burned by coaches, and so that's why they're a little gun-shy right now. Mm -hmm. um, but I ended up aligning with an absolutely amazing um, sales and business coach. Her name is Ryan Dowdy um, back in March, and she taught me how to sell from a place of serving. Mm. Um, a place of conversation and building relationships and sharing life with people. Yeah. And that resonated with me because I was at a place where I was like, God, did I hear you wrong? Because if this doesn't become profitable by the end of this year, I, I'm done. I will always write a daily devotional because I write a daily devotional or I go live every day, mm -hmm. every day. And, you know, I, I, and, you know, it was just like, he was like, here's Ryan, Ryan, meet Leah. Right. I actually now work for her also as one of her success coaches. I was doing a lot of stuff in the back end writing for her in that way. So I got to know her processes. Right. So I really got to see a lot of how does a six figure coach, uh, six and seven figure coach build a business? How do they interact? And I absorbed that information and started to A, build my business based on what she was teaching me, what I was mm -hmm. seeing. Yeah. And then ultimately God in, 
in December was like, okay, now I want you to do this for Christian women, right? Because she, you know, she she teaches, she's a Christian, but she teaches everyone. My niche is specific to Christian women, right? Right. And I, right. Said, I said to Ryan, I was like, oh my God, like I'm teaching your stuff. I don't know how to not teach your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, well, you graduated from Ryan Dowdy University, so you go right ahead, right? Yes. <laughs> you know, but we don't understand as Christian women, we have a lot of money mindset issues. Um, it, Christians in general have a lack mentality. I'm about right? to say, it's, okay, yeah. call it out, call it. Yeah. Oh, you know, <laughs> no joke. <laughs> like, like, you know, that's the thing. Like God made gold and put gold in the garden of Eden, called it good. So we, you know, the enemy knew exactly how to keep orphanages from being built, to keep um, ministries from being funded. And that's by giving the Christian community a poverty mindset that somehow being impoverished and being poor, um, at least in where I grew up, is godly. Right. Well, I don't know about you guys, but the family that I grew up with, um, they weren't godly, but they were poor. And they were broken mindset, right? Um, you know, and so I find as I encounter women in the online space, that they, they're all confused. Like, how do I sell? You know, how do I do this? How do I build a business? How do I, how do I price my programs? How do I ask people mm -hmm. to pay for what I do? Right. right. Because we have all this mindset drama wrapped up in, you know, money and is that godly enough and you know can i even ask can I, can it uh, like all these things right and yet you know and 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 women are even marginalized even more because oh, oh we're supposed to you know empty ourselves like a drink offering for everybody exactly. but that is not what god called us to do by the way and mm -hmm. by the way the worker is worthy of his or her wages right you know and so we, you know, me helping women to unpack why, why are you stuck? How do you sell? How do you sell with integrity? Um, how do you still serve when somebody tells you, no, I don't want your programs? Mm -hmm. well, I teach that too. I'm going to still engage with people. I'm still going to, you know, comment on their posts. I'm still going to pray with them. I'm still going to, you know, answer their messages, even if they say, I don't fully align and resonate with you and I want a different coach. Mm -hmm. That's what sets us apart, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. That, that's why you can sell with integrity and invite somebody into a sales conversation, have a discovery call with them or whatever, or even hear a no, I don't want your programs and I don't want a discovery call with you. Mm -hmm. And it'll be okay. Why? Because I'm still going to serve that person. I'm still going to pray with them. I'm still going to comment on their posts. I'm still going to continue the relationship. That's right. Right. That's good. <laughs> Even through all of that, yeah. you have a heart of a servant. Mm -hmm. But even having a heart of a servant does not mean you have to be at the lowest point of the totem pole. You can serve and get paid too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Amen. I mean, it's not like Abraham or Moses or Isaac or anybody else was like, oh, yeah, go ahead. Take that well. Uh, right. Take all my crops. Take all my flocks. Take all my everything. You know, like none of them did that. By the way, there was an argument over a well. <laughs> <laughs> there, you know what I'm saying? Like, the, you know, Abraham was a hundredfold blessed in the same year from his harvest. Okay. So why do we think that we shouldn't have a harvest? Just because ours isn't crops and it's actually, you know, some sort of currency. It's the same thing. It's still a harvest. Right. Ooh. We're still harvesting something. Money is an energy exchange. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's what our, we value exchange, whether or not we're exchanging flocks or herds or whatever. Right. 
That's right. Mm -hmm. I like. And by the way, just so I'm gonna cover this too. Jesus was not poor. I will, I will, I will, I will battle anyone over this. And here's why. Here's why I know Jesus wasn't poor. Because nobody knew that Judas was stealing money until after the fact. So if you got <laughs> only $20 and somebody pilfers money from you, I guarantee on to you, you're going to notice. Right. But if nobody noticed, there was a ton of money in that bag. Come so on. don't tell me Jesus was poor. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Mm. Mm-mm. And the only reason he didn't have a place to lay his head, ladies and gentlemen, was because people didn't let him get to places. But by the way, he did have friends and he did have places he could have laid his head. He was talking about something completely different. And I will go to bat on that any day. And no, I'm not a minister. I don't have a divinity degree, but you read the word of God. Like I truly. Yeah. I mean, they cast lots for his clothes. Don't Come tell on. me he was a pauper. Okay. Huh? All right, I felt it. Okay, <laughs> we you I get heard after about these things. <laughs> Look, he said, "Go out and spread the gospel." So that's the good news. So the good news is the man we serve has plenty. Yes. So that means Amen. we, as his people, have access to plenty. We don't have to operate in poor. Yes, yes. right. There is no lack in the kingdom of God because he is the creator of the universe. Yes. Right? We act as if we're going to a God who can't create more. Come on. Right? And mm-hmm. I mean, he He can choose how that comes into our lives. And don't get me wrong. I have asked him to magically put money into my bank account. <laughs> And I do not believe in the traditional name it and claim it. I do believe in name what you want, claim absolute responsibility for it. Come on. And then co-create it with God. Okay. That's the name and claim it I believe in. And if you come from a place of empowerment and you say, God, I'm going to do everything absolutely everything that you tell me to do. I will have self-discipline, self-control. I will prune out TV. I will prune out the junk stuff. I will work the hours you tell me to work. I will serve the people you tell me to serve. I will connect with the people you tell me to connect. I will invite people into sales conversations. Do not tell me that the Lord won't bless that. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because you're staying obedient. That's right. Because mm-hmm. mm. delayed obedience is still disobedience. Amen. No procrastinating, <laughs> right? I do that sometimes. It's okay. Hashtag real and raw. It happens. <laughs> Hashtag real and raw. So, you know, as we talk about a more plentiful mindset, this next one is a big one um, as we dive in. We talk a lot about writing the vision and making it plain. Mm -hmm. How do we make it a reality? Mm. Amen. I love that. Um, And that was that was the second book I wrote. Um, So I have nine different books on Amazon right now that I have written and published up there. And um, I God really put on my heart to write how to create a biblical vision board to empower our daily dreams and goals, right? Mm-hmm. To learn how to pray the word of God um, and to learn how to walk out God's kingdom principles every day, right? That's what we, uh, especially women, um, you know, we are taught to be quiet and not to speak up, right? Mm-hmm. Um, especially, especially our marginalized populations. Love you guys. Thank you for doing a podcast and speaking up and sharing. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, because by the way, you are making an impact for so many people, so many people, including my beautiful baby girl. So mm-hmm. that being said. We'll talk about that offline, but anyway. Yeah, gotcha. um, <laughs> so I um I realized that you know 
if we are told in scripture to speak to the dry bones and the dry bones will live. Mm -hmm. And Jesus showed us to speak the word of God at the enemy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that enemy could be any enemy, but we most especially know that the enemy who seeks to kill, steal, and destroy comes at us every day. Right. That's right. And if we know that God Jesus spoke scripture out. We know that uh, that God specifically told Moses to speak to the rock and water would flow out. Now Moses was disobedient and he took his stick and he hit it. <laughs> <laughs> and then he got in trouble. Well. And he didn't get he didn't get to go to the promised land specifically because he was not obedient to speak to the rock. Mm -hmm. He wanted to force and he was angry, right? Because he was angry because of what, you know, uh, everything that was going on. Mm -hmm. And I could unpack Moses with you all day. Talk about mindset issues. Talk about had the most ideal uh, childhood growing up in a palace in Egypt. Mm -hmm. And he had a lack mentality. He Ooh. had poor leadership skills, very Ooh. poor leadership skills. I could unpack that man. Whoo! I could unpack that man. Anyway, <laughs> there's a, we're going to have to do another one when we talk about mindset issues and leadership skills and, you know, creating your own problems. We'll do that another day. But okay. literally, God said, speak to the rock and the rock will flow water, right? Yeah. And so we have all these instances in in scripture that show that we are to speak the word of God mm -hmm. out. But we're not taught that in our churches and we as women aren't taught that either, right? And so I realized, you know, that if I speak out and we know that we know that the new age uses, right, you know, affirmations, blah, 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 like all these things, right? right? But we in the Christian community need to take back what was originally ours. Come on. To speak it into existence, mm -hmm. right? God spoke and boom, the world was created, right? The That's right. It's created. He right? said, let there be light. And there was light. <laughs> he, he speaks it into existence. He speaks to rebuke the enemy. He has shown us and we're not doing it. We're not doing it. We can't battle everything inside of our mind and have a sound mind. Mm. So, mm, mm, so mm. we have to speak, right? The tongue has power over life and death. Those who indulge it must eat its fruits. Proverbs 18, 21. So what fruit are we eating. I want to eat the fruit of blessings from God. And the only way that I can get the fruit of the blessings of God is to speak his word and imprint mm -hmm. it upon my heart, soul, and mind to speak it over my circumstances, to speak into existence that which God has put on my heart, the dreams and the goals. Lord, I speak Yes, from the, the empowered treasures of his glory ephesians 3 16 through 17 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right teach me to do your will for you are my god may your good spirit lead me on a level ground and everybody all, all the women keep asking me well what's god's will how do i know what it is speak his scripture and you are in a hundred percent alignment with his will his will is his scripture you want to know his voice keep speaking his scripture out loud and i guarantee i guarantee you you will know his voice that's right right that's right when I called, you answered me. You made me bold and strong. Psalm 138.3. Therefore, I speak, Lord, I am calling to you. I am bold and strong because you said I can be. Mm -hmm. And I stand on the solid rock of that word. Amen? Amen. Amen. Right? But where are the women speaking this? 
Instead, they're telling me that they're not good enough, that they're marginalized, that they're anxious, that they're worried, that they're depressed, that their marriages are falling apart, that they're not a good enough wife and mother, but they are. Mm -hmm. And the reason why they believe that they're not and they don't believe they're worthy and they don't believe that they're called is because they aren't speaking the truth. I am worthy. I am beloved. I am called. I am qualified. I am the woman at Jesus' feet. Yes. Therefore, he said to me, go, your sins are forgiven. Therefore, I get up, I turn around and look at my community and say, though you remember my past, I will yet go forward in the truth that is now. And the mm -hmm. truth is, I am forgiven and forgiven. Yes. Sorry. Got a little... <laughs> I felt that. But see, that right there is a testament to the work you've done. Because the work you've done will speak for you. That's what he said in his word. So it's his evident that it is not just you speaking, but you're speaking from a place of I've been there, I've done the work, I've came forward. You too can do the work when you get with Coach Leah. <laughs> I, just, I just dropped that for you. And the way that you're you're able to recite those scriptures, mm -hmm. but you so many people oftentimes we see in society they quote scriptures, but they don't have any context to back it up that they live it. Mm -hmm. So they have a bullet that they're firing with no gunpowder. Yes. So oh, you're great. able to just put your lifestyle along with the text. Uh-huh. You walk the text. Yes. Because, see, that's the thing that the church teaches. Memorize scripture, memorize scripture. But what we don't what we don't see is people saying, like, I don't even have all of scripture memorized. I actually don't have a great memory, ladies and gentlemen. It's actually all over. Like, it's, like you can't see the back. Of it, what I was quoting is literally behind my desk. It's on the wall. It's everywhere. It's in every bathroom, that bathroom, both bathrooms upstairs. It's in my journals because I don't have a great memory. So what I do is I write it out and then I create it into a proclamation. I thank you, Lord, for the oil of gladness that you have anointed my spirit with. Thank you. Amen. Literally. Speak that every day until it is inside of me so that when I'm writing down the, 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 you know, when I'm riding down the road and all of a sudden I have this ho horrible memory that wants to suck me back into the old mm -hmm. depression and the old me, I literally say, no, I rebuke that because the oil of gladness has been on my soul and spirit. Lord, anoint me. I stand on that and I speak it out loud. I don't speak it in my head. I speak it out loud. Trust me, my kids are so used to me talking to myself, <laughs> but I'm talking to Jesus. It's okay. That's right. Okay. That's right. Okay. And by the way, the Universal Studios that we were at last week where I was like, I'm not going back into fear and anxiety. I was like, I am joyful. I am calm. Like the people were probably like, what is wrong with that crazy lady? I don't care. I don't care anymore. <laughs> I literally had that same moment this morning. Like I went back to the gym and I had to take care of a bill. And you know how that goes. You feel that embarrassment like. You know, somebody going to look funny because I got to take care of this. But I said, I will not be ashamed. I mm -hmm. will walk in upright and I'm going forward for me. I'm going forward to be healthy. I will not allow judgment to hold me back from bettering myself. Yes. And amen. Because no one's going to live your life. Yeah, no one's gonna live your life. No one's going to fill your bank account, change your life, do it, you know. But they can judge us all they want. But you know what? I want you to speak. I am unshaken by other people's opinions of me and my work. Mm. I speak that every single day because last year, the reason why I wouldn't invite people into sales conversations and into my programs is because I was so worried about what they would think about my intentions. Mm. And God was like, do you have your worth in me? 
Do you care more about what I tell you to do? Mm -hmm. Or do you value other people's opinions of you? Wow. Yeah. And I was like, well, apparently, God, I value other people's opinions of me and I get my worth from other people. Let's unpack that and fix that right now. <laughs> yes, Lord, do it. <laughs> And he was like, yeah. And then you're going to write a coaching Bible study about that. And I was like, okay, hi, guys. Everything that I have to go through ends up becoming a coaching program. Right. And it is beneficial. It's needed. We, especially as you mentioned with women, we are emotional driven. We are emotionally driven. And there are moments where our emotions take root or take that front seat where we need to have God's word driving this. Mm -hmm. We let our emotions drive it and not his word. And so your declarations and proclamations of his word begin to shift the direction of how you focus. So that's that's all, very essential, very essential. And you know, it's, it's funny that you mentioned that because you know, you really share with us how you flow in, in your clients, how you flow in your sessions. And I mean, honestly, Quentin and I feel like we just had a good old session and I just want you to know <laughs> we have been blessed. Yeah. But you know, through all of those experiences you share with us, what has made you more resilient? Like how has that made you more resilient? Well, I think that, you know, one of the things I know to be very, very true is that the more I speak the word of God, the more it rewires my brain. Mm -hmm. um, and so we know neuroscience um, that our brain fires and wires and creates neural pathways um, to sustain homeostasis, what it thinks is homeostasis, what it thinks is protective, right? Yeah. So if we're constantly anxious, then it's going to create neural pathways that stay that way, right? And mm -hmm. as we speak the word of God, the word of God is a healing balm, but it's not a quick fix, ladies and gentlemen. It does not happen overnight. It actually takes not 27 days. Like I know everybody's like, it's new habit. Just do 27 days. Okay. Yeah. By 27 days, you no longer have to absolutely take physical force to get yourself to go. Right. But it actually takes 67 days to get to a point where you have rewired your brain so that you don't have to use a higher level critical thinking to force yourself to do the new habit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Seven days is a long time. Like, you know, think about that in terms of it takes a couple of, uh, you know, three plus months, right? Yeah. Really. Yeah. Right. So, you know, it, it, I like to say the more we speak it and the more that we try and do and come into alignment with that, yeah. the more our brain fires and wires to stay into that. And then it becomes easier to bounce back from hardship. It yeah. becomes easier to take um, the hard circumstances of life and use it to catapult us into the new thing, to up level ourselves, um, to use whatever it is, the hardship, the no, the, um, the disappointment, the low turnout, for a program, the low yeah. buy-in for a new program, whatever it is, or or even um, you know some really difficult situations, right? We become more resilient, and we we pivot or change or adjust more easily because yeah. we've already done the work inside of our mind to heal the past, to heal our current you know behavior, attitudes, mindset. Right. We have mm -hmm. a mindset of abundance. We can say, OK, all right, Abba Father, um, you know, that bill came in. It was totally unexpected. I, I really, you know, I, I, I am going to ask, give me God blessed eyes to see solutions where I think there is none because you are the creator. And if you are the creator and you are creative, then you can make me creative. That's right. And so I will do whatever you tell me to do. And I'm going to go forth and I'm going to do 
And you'll be surprised. Like I told, I was, I really thought I wasn't creative. I like, I told you guys, like, I didn't think I was a good writer. I didn't think like, I was like, nope, none of these things. And, you know, every day I'm like, what are we doing today, God? Because I am creative. I have proclaimed it for three <laughs> years, three years. And I think that I'm about 90% believing that I'm creative. I'm really like, I just guess that I'm just going to own this, right? Mm -hmm. I've been going that I keep doing this, that I keep showing up and you keep talking through me. And I keep writing these devotionals that it resonates with women. And I keep producing these things that are amazing that I can only and should only give glory to you, Lord. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. That's how we become more resilient. Because we mm -hmm. put all the good things in place. Mm -hmm. We're ready for the hard time. Yeah. We've come into full alignment with his kingdom principles. And we can't come into alignment with his kingdom principles if we don't know them. Therefore, we have to have an empowered morning routine of reading the word of God, speaking the word of God, knowing the word of God, so that we can say, I put my hand to the plow and I do not look back. Therefore, Lord, please prosper the seed that I am sowing today and the work that I am doing and prosper me in all respects, just as my soul prospers because my soul is prospering by reading this word. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to just Amen. keep this on repeat. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, uh, very impactful. Definitely yeah. didn't, didn't didn't lead. I'm not leaving the same way I came. So it's definitely been very beneficial to us mm -hmm. and our listeners. Yes, thank you, Brianna. Thank you guys. For and and overall, we appreciate the time you have spent with us and our listeners. Could you share with? our audience, where they can follow you and any final comments that you may have. Oh, thank you guys. You guys are awesome. You guys are amazing. I just appreciate you guys so much. Um, anyone can follow me um, on any social media. I'm on all the social medias except for Twitter. I don't really do that. Um, <laughs> but my website is burstingwithblessings.com. And mm -hmm. so you can find all of my social media handles and I am on uh, Instagram at bursting with blessings. I have a business page, which is bursting with blessings. Anybody? Yes. Can find me? <laughs> and that's what God told me uh, when I asked him, well, what are we going to call this blog and this website? And he was like, bursting with blessings. I was like, yes, I am bursting with blessings yeah. because I'm finally listening. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny, but that's so good. Um, uh, do you have any programs or anything? I do. Where, okay. I, yeah, I have several. I, I have a monthly group coaching program for women who are um, building um, a business, whether that's brick and mortar or online. I have um, customized programs. I have courses. I have books. I have anything that anyone needs because apparently i had to like make a mess of my life so much that <laughs> You're I, like, I kept i kept having to fix things <laughs> so now i just keep writing a book about it i keep coaching whatever anybody comes to me about um because been there done that yeah tried to mm -hmm. hurt my marriage decades ago been there done that uh struggled with mothering been there done that <laughs> okay you are a resourceful woman that's bursting with blessings Praise Jesus. All him. All him. Amen. Yes. Well, listen, he has really blessed this podcast. Yes. We're bursting because oh, this has just been an awesome reminder that we have to stay in the word and stay on the wall and mm -hmm. see the salvation of the Lord and speak those things that be not as though they were. Amen, Brianna. Yes, that is the perfect ending to this because <laughs> that is exactly it girl i love you yeah i love it so guys we're gonna catch you on the next one make sure to connect with coach leah and we'll see you bye bye
Thank you to all listeners and subscribers. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Leave us a five-star review on Apple so that we can continue sharing resilient love. Thanks for listening.